The Creality K1 versus the Creality K1C. In this video, I wanna cover the differences between these two printers, and is it worth spending the extra money to get the Creality K1C or the K, the C, the K, this, this is the C. They're really, really similar. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Frank, and today we're going to be comparing the Creality K1 versus the Creality K1 Carbon. I mean K1C. What did I say? Anyway, these are two really cool little printers. They're bite size Ender 3, you know, not bed slingers, the Core XY machines, and both of them are rather really good. We're going to be going over the specs on them, the differences, the price points, and then we're going to start talking about the capabilities of both of them, and then my personal experience abusing both of them for months, using them to print things like Etsy orders and all of that. Now, looking at them, which is quick first glance, they're pretty much the same thing. Without it being written on the front of the bed right here, you can see it says K1C down there, and uh, not looking for the camera that's included in the K1C, you really can't tell the difference on these machines. They're the same thing. They both have the same build volume, 220 by 220 by 250, so like I said before, an Ender 3 size, and they are a Coro XY machine. This way, the bed moves down and the nozzle head moves around inside the printer. They're both fully enclosed printers. They don't have much of a footprint. They fit really nicely. They're actually, they're actually surprisingly light, all things considered. Uh, just don't break the door when you swing it open. But before we continue into that, let's just talk about the basic price of these things. The Creality K1 here is 429, 430 US dollars. And there's sales on Creality's website all the time. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. I imagine this is gonna slowly start getting cheaper as they wanna push the K1C and make this cheaper. And the K1C sits at 499 right now. I'm filming this around a Mother's Day sale, so Creality's website is littered with sales, but uh, I will link both of them down below and maybe you'll catch one on sale or just get it off of Amazon or something. Now, what I do find weird on the website is that both of these printers list that they can handle the same filaments. I'm not gonna sit here and remember all of them, so I'm gonna read them off of my computer. They say ABS, PLA, PETG, PET, TPU, PA, ABS, ASA, PC, uh, polycarbonate, right, PC, PLA, carbon fiber, PACF, PETCF. They both list that on both of the pages. So what are you getting with the K1C? Now the first thing you're getting is an AI camera. I've gone and actually added the camera to my standard K1, it was $25. So if you want to make a K1 into a K1C, first off you add 25 bucks to it. So instead of 430, you're now at 455. Next up is a little carbon filter that just goes over the back of the fan. Um, you can hear it, hear it rattling. It just clicks right into the fan. I haven't checked Creality's website to see if like, Huh, it fits on my K1 as well. Uh, I don't know if you can just buy this. I imagine you can buy refills for it. I would just have to check. So that's something. The user interface is the same, the touch screen's the same, the firmware, all of that's the same. It, it's, it's the same printer. Parts cooling, fans, print speed, 600 millimeters a second, input shaping, blah, 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 blah. You can look at the website. I'm not gonna list every single spec. But aside from coming with the AI camera, it does have one or I guess two benefits. If you guys remember from a previous video or things I've talked about online, the K1, the initial release, had a little bit of a problem with its hot end. If you have a K1 and this little selector lever thing that holds the filament in, if this is chrome, shiny, shiny chrome, you have an old style V1 extruder system on your K1. I think some K1 Max has even got away with it too. This had some heat break problems. It was causing some clogging. The uh, extruder gears were like getting all weird and wonky. They've since gone and fixed and released new versions of that. You, I think you could, for a while there, you could actually get a kit that they would provide. I don't know, a lot of them are fixed now though. So if it has like a brushed stainless look where you can kind of see your reflection in it, hopefully you know the difference between chrome and brushed stainless. Maybe there's a photo on screen right now. Um, this works fine. Ever since I replaced my K1 with that extruder system, it's been perfect. Now the K1C boasts a tri-metal blend unicorn nozzle. Basically it's a quick swap nozzle extruder system that's made for tougher materials. Glow in the dark filaments, carbon fill filaments. The nozzle isn't gonna wear down as quickly or at all if you're running the tougher filaments through it. It doesn't mean you can't run those same filaments through the K1, you're just gonna put more stress on your nozzle and it's gonna start to wear it down and widen it out. That's all. So you have a fixed and improved nozzle. They said they also uh, modified the extruder gears. I haven't taken these apart to really see if the extruder gears themselves have a big difference in them, but they've both been performing just fine and I haven't had any weird clogs or issues with either of them. Now, I wanna tell you guys a quick little story about my experience with the K1 and the K1Cs. I had a Creality K1 for a while. I didn't like it at first. If you wanna go look at that review video, you'll kind of understand why, uh, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad printer. I just didn't like some of the choices they made on it, like having to use glue on the bed on a four or $500 printer. Wasn't a big fan of that. But 
I've since retracted that. The printer works great in both of these. Actually, all three of these have been pumping stuff out for my Etsy. I had my original K1 doing work, putting in the work for all of that, and then I was sent a K1C, and I immediately threw an Iron Man helmet at it. They sent me a roll of carbon fiber PLA with it, so I just threw a mask at it and it printed it flawlessly. I just, obviously there were the supports and the settings that I chose myself, but this thing came out great. And this is my first carbon fiber Ironman helmet. It's pretty neat. Really good quality, the fitment was good, and it's just, it's just different feeling the carbon, the PLA CF. It's, it's just a different material. Now, from there, I didn't have a lot of time to continue to test this machine because I was falling back on a lot of Etsy orders. And through some email traffics and a little bit of a miscommunication with Creality and SaneSmart, I, I might have gotten a second K1C. However, I didn't test this machine at all. I had files loaded on my USB sticks here and here. I literally took that K1C, moved it into the garage, put it next to this one, copied the files on the USB stick, and just started printing. I did the little calibration setup it has you do right when you power it on for the first time but I didn't do anything else. And these have been printing hundreds of Flexi Rexies for me, nonstop, right out of the box, 24 seven. Same files across all three. I was printing PLA, so I didn't need to change profiles from the K1 to the K1C. It was just pumping them out. Start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. I have probably put more hours on these printers than most people will put on them in their lifetime. And everything was coming out perfect. But next up, I actually wanted to finally compare the quality of a PLA print to a PLA carbon fiber print to see if they were coming out any different or better. So first, I printed some Benchies, and we'll get some close-up shots of these. And honestly, they, they came out the same. One's just not shiny because uh, the carbon fiber PLA is a little matte, so they, they look great. Next up, what I was holding before was my little Flexi Rexies. I just printed out some standard Rexies laying on the bed, and in terms of finish and quality, they came out the same. Then I did some print and play swords. This one's missing the bottom because I ran out of filament. This is the last thing I printed and I ran out of carbon, so it didn't actually finish all the way, but it still worked, don't judge. So tolerance and quality, they can both handle print and place just fine. And last but not least, and you guys are never gonna believe this, I 3D modeled something and designed something to print on these printers. These right here are some Hot Toys figures, and if you guys are familiar with them, you, you know what I'm talking about. They're just cool Iron Man figures you get and collect, whatever. I wanted to be able to display these on my wall. Instead of putting them on a shelf or anything, I wanted a way to mount them directly to my wall so it just looked like you know they were just sitting there and floating. So after taking some measurements, I designed these cool little holder brackets for both of them. This is the octagon one, their, uh, or hexagon one, my bad, that fits this Mark 85, and then I can s just bolt it to the wall so it just looks like he's floating. And then I went and did the same thing for the Mark 39 here. So I can just put the base right on it and bolt it to the wall and make it, you know, Boom, perfect. Now, what a great reason to test carbon fiber PLA. Which one was gonna be stronger and which one was gonna come out nicer? So the verdict was uh, the carbon fiber won, it, uh, obviously. Of course the carbon fiber was gonna win. The PLA, it feels pretty strong, but it does have a little bit of a flex to it. I definitely feel like I can break this. Where the carbon uh, fiber one, this just feels so much more rigid. And it's not holding much weight, but there's a substantial, substantially less flex in this. So I'm not as worried about using this to mount this on my wall. I don't know if you can see it right there. Yeah, you can see the lines where I actually ran out of normal and carbon fiber and had to swap it to different brands. Um, I think I went from Creality's PLA CF to Bamboo's CF, uh, PLA CF, and it worked fine. It actually, you can't even feel where it, uh, where it changed filament. But I, I did a thing. I, I, I cheated. I heckin' bamboozled you guys. While I printed the Mark 85 carbon fiber on the K1C and the PLA on the K1, I actually swapped the profiles completely on the K1 and K1C. I printed the uh, carbon base for the 39 on the normal K1C, stay, stay, stay. And I printed the normal PLA on the K1C. The, the K1 can do carbon fiber. I just did damage to the nozzle, which that's whatever, it still prints fine. There's no difference. They printed, they printed fine. What I'm getting at is they're the same printer. Again, the K1C is just gonna last longer because it has that nicer nozzle. That's about it. If you don't care about the camera, you're not gonna need the camera. You can also just buy better nozzles for the K1. You get the hardened steel tips or whatever. The Creality sells better nozzles for this thing. So if you just wanna save some money, you can throw better nozzles at this and you don't need the K1C. But if you're asking me, spend the extra 70 bucks, get the better extruder, get the better nozzles, and get the AI camera, and then you just have a printer that can do more for a longer period of time instead of having to worry about the K1 just wearing down. 
And last but not least, just my general experiences and opinions on these printers. If you guys happen to see my uh, 3D printing devil fruit video where I printed a bunch of devil fruit for the wall back there, all of those fruits were printed across my K1s and K1Cs. And since I have two K1Cs, the K1Cs did more work than the normal K1. And honestly, they killed it. I had no issues with any of the filament. I didn't have any clogs, any failures were my fault for maybe filament running out. Um, a Molin, if you're watching this, you're not, but you're glowing the dark filaments where it releases from the roll at the end, it's too sharp. It gets stuck on the roll. And it's really annoying because then the filament sensor doesn't get tripped. It's not the printer's fault, it's your fault, fix it. So again, for things like my shop, I've just gone and loaded all the G-code across all three printers. And when an order comes in, I hit print and I just it just goes. The repetition and reliability of these things has been great. I get an order, I walk in, I hit print on whichever one I need to print, and I walk out of the room and I come back and it's printed. You know, obviously I need to load the filament up, but you get it. We're at a stage where printers are fire and forget, and that should be the standard. That should be the norm. I shouldn't have to sit there and watch the first layer every time. I should be able to trust the machine. When I say go, it goes. At the end of the day, both of these printers work. I haven't had any weird glitches or issues or catastrophic failures. They're reliable out of box. They take a couple minutes to set up, and this is what the future of printing should look like. A lot of companies are doing this. It's not just Creality. Uh, Bamboo's been doing this for a while. Maybe one day Elegoo will hop on that train and we'll get some good Core XYs from them instead of the giant giga storm orange storm thing that they just made make a smaller printer it's too expensive so in grand summation if you guys are in the market for a printer you're looking at the creality k1 or k1c just ask yourself do you want a nozzle that can do a little bit of tougher materials over the long term and you care about the ai camera or is it just going to be in your studio or office occasionally you're going to print some stuff and it's going to be plas and pet g's and all of that the k1 isn't a bad option and like i said i believe this is going to just continue to get cheaper and cheaper as they push out new printers. 430 bucks for a printer that works this reliably, this fast out of box, that's pretty good. But if you do plan on printing more abrasive materials, you do wanna print stuff like the carbons, the PLA carbons, the PETG carbons, whatever, and you plan on getting the camera anyway, maybe you're adding it to a print farm, the extra 70 bucks for the K1C definitely isn't a bad deal. But at the end of the day, they're kind of just the same printer with just a few upgrades thrown at the K1C. So I hope all of that made sense. It wasn't much to go off of, but I think I did my best. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in the video, please leave some comments down below. I will answer any questions you guys have, and I will try my best to respond to as many as possible. Also, if you're already subscribed because you should be and you want to support me in an even further way because you like the content I'm putting out, please check out my YouTube memberships or head over to my Patreon where I post behind the scenes footage, vlogs, travel updates, all this stuff and private live streams. So go check that out if you're interested. But if you just watched this video, that's more than enough and I appreciate every single one of you. No more outro guys because YouTube wanted to start filing copyright claims against it. So I'm just going to cut it out completely. As always, thank you so much for watching guys and you have a good day.